Let me share with you a personal story about how communication failures can put patients at risk. One night, as an anesthesiologist, I was on call in the operating room, I was doing a string of general surgery add-on cases. The surgeon said, the next patient we're bringing to the operating room is a 300-pound woman with rheumatoid arthritis who had surgery a couple days ago. She's not doing very well. We need to bring her back and take a second look. We finished the case I was doing. I went out to pre-op holding. There was a 300-pound woman with rheumatoid arthritis for an abdominal exploration. I talked to her. I interviewed her. I looked at her. I evaluated her airway since the ability to deliver oxygen is critical for the safety of a patient. When I looked at her airway, I wasn't really happy with how it looked. And I said, you know, it might be difficult to get a breathing tube in this woman. The nurse in pre-op said, you know, well, you know, your, your partner, Rastrelli, he took care of her a couple days ago. He happened to be there. I went down to his room and I said, Alan, do you remember this woman? 300 pound woman with rheumatoid arthritis for a belly operation. He said, yeah, I do. I said, well, airway looks terrible. He said, well, it did look terrible, but in fact, it's pretty easy to get a breathing tube in. So we went back to the operating room, pre-oxygenated this woman, put her off to sleep in a hurry like we do with people with abdominal cases, tried to put a breathing tube into her. It was impossible. Tried two times. She started to turn blue, desaturate, basically had a failed airway, which is every anesthesiologist's nightmare. We just managed, two or three of us, working pretty hard to keep enough oxygen delivery to her that in 10 or 15 minutes when the muscle relaxant wore off, she could breathe on her own. We tried to wake her up. Just the trauma of trying to intubate her, put a breathing tube in a couple times, she now couldn't breathe on her own. We sat in the operating room for an hour, giving her positive pressure ventilation. Every time I turned it off, she started to turn blue. We ended up putting a tracheostomy in under local anesthesia on the operating room table. Once we secured the airway, I put her off to sleep. And as they pulled her down back, there was no incision on her belly. And I said, what's the deal here? At that point, the surgeon turned to me and said, oh, yeah, by the way, it's a different patient. We changed the order of the patients coming to the operating room. Now, if you think about it, it's a one in a million, two 300-pound women with rheumatoid rheumatoid arthritis for the same operation. But think about the 15-second conversation that would have kept me from putting this woman's life at risk. I said, Michael, we changed the order of the cases. It's a different patient. Would have approached this case very, very differently. And that's one of the, the more dangerous episodes I've had in 20 years of anesthesia. Very simple communication failure.